<laughs> Good morning, one and all. How do you do? Welcome to the Irish Show on WHK AM 1420. I'm Jerry Quinn. We're broadcasting to you this morning from Battery Park in Cleveland, Ohio. Our program is brought to you by Chambers Funeral Home, DJ McIntyre's Pub and Restaurant, Joyce Buick GMC, Cleveland's number one Buick dealer, the Flat Irish Pub and Restaurant, Legacy Village, Kylie Roofing, Ireland.com, CIE Tours. All of these good folks bringing you the Irish Show this morning on WHK AM 1420. Stay with us now for two hours. We've got music, we've got guests, we've got people from Ireland, Toronto, all over the world. So don't go away. Stick around. We'll start in a traditional fashion. May the pipes begin. this time I'd like to introduce James Kilbane of County Mayo, right. who's a Kilbane on both sides of his family, he tells me, so we're pretty sure, certain he's related to our honoree. <laughs> For the Irish and American National Anthems, I give you James Kilbane. Mm -hmm. 
Shane of Fina Fall hath off we all again. Wind or soul are in a rony hole. Shan shear nor shin shear fasta Neog for fwin shear on off wind troll An ock the hains of orn of weir Negal ha shreath on vos no seer Negan he shreak fill all a fair air Shall live, Connie, our own of <laughs> Oh, say, shall you see by the dawn's early light? Oh, so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner Yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the Thank you very much, James. We're here today truly for an Irish-American event, as Johnny Kilbane represents the best of what Mayo and Ireland produced when it came to, Cle to Cleveland and the United States of America and planted roots. All those here who are Irish-American can be proud of this particular day, and if you're not an Irish-American or one of the Irish themselves who have come to be with us today from the Mayo Society International Meeting that's been held this week. You have special reason to be proud of Johnny Kilbane for what he represents, and that's why this sculpture exists. You know, this story started with a great-grandson finding in his grandmother's attic the 1912 film footage. Those who know anything about old film, the nitrate film was extremely flammable, very hard to handle. He came to the Irish American Archive Society and the Cleveland Public Library and said, I'd like to restore this and can we do something to celebrate the centennial of my great-grandfather and his championship. But Johnny was more than just a champion boxer. He was a member of this community. His house is just here at Herman Avenue, almost within spitting distance as somebody might say. The fact is that he was one of us, but rose among us to show us the way. He fought for what he needed to do to support his family and be a contributor in this American country that he was grown in. We're so very proud to have this symbol of Johnny, but more importantly, a symbol of all of us and what America and being of Irish descent can do for a person. If they have a fighting heart, so without further ado, and proceeding in the program, I'd like to have Father Jim O'Donnell come up and have an invocation to start our program. It's a privilege and a great blessing 
to be called here today. I've spent 42 years at St. Malachy's and they've been blessed years. And just this past week, I looked at the photo for the 50th anniversary of St. Malachy's and there's Johnny Kilbane. And so he was an icon to many, especially to those who had lost hope. In his time, in his era, it was tough. It was very tough. And that's in one way which conditioned him. I suppose in the words of our great priest friend, Monsignor Newton, who was a great priest and pastor and teacher, and he grew up in the old angle in the days of Johnny Kilbane. And he told me one day, you know, he said, it's, to it's so tough in the angle that even the sparrows sing in bass. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's important that we acknowledge uh, accomplishments that people have achieved. And we acknowledge today, you know, the only boxer that's ever held a title as long as Johnny Kilbane. And yet the interesting thing is, it took a, a coach, Coach Dunn, who saw in Johnny what he didn't see himself. And he nurtured it. And he said, you're ready. And they took him out to the Vermilion training camp and began to hone his skills. But it came out of, uh, there was a big man of 25, 30 pounds heavier than Johnny, by name Campbell. And they had no one to box against him. And they said, Johnny, why don't you go out? He said, geez, he'll kill me. You know, I, he, he never did any boxing up to that point, but he won. He knocked out Campbell in the sixth round. And so that began his career, but it took somebody to see in Johnny what he didn't see himself. And as time went on, that's what Johnny began to do for others. He saw in them what they didn't see in themselves. And so I think it's important to remember his accomplishments and continue to honor those accomplishments. And that would be to remember the people in the old angle. Because when he grew up, the people there were poor. They didn't have very much. And so I would just kind of challenge you to look at, as you think about that, how can we continue to remember his presence and his accomplishments by remembering the poor of Malachy's. We have hundreds there every day at that side door for breakfast, for lunch, 500 every Monday night for a meal. Our homeless people that come for a shower every morning at seven o'clock and all of our children that are trying to get an education. Those are all the things that Johnny Cobain stood for. And that's why we're honoring him today because he was an icon to many and a light to many others. He gave them hope when there wasn't any hope. He gave them life when they thought they were finished. He taught them how to fight on it. And so I would like, in that spirit, to dedicate these few words to Johnny Kilbane. God has given us our physical powers in order that we may serve him joyfully, help one another, and by discipline in accord with the law of God, make our body fit in every good work. So as it says in St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. And thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. St. Paul's words are especially applicable today to Johnny Kilbane who was not shadow boxing. He trained to win and he did for over 20 years, the only one to hold the featherweight title that long or any title. He became a world champion. And to all of his family, the, all your great grandchildren, you've got a great treasure to hold on to and to live. And the words of St. Paul in the second letter to Timothy, these are the words of Jimmy, Johnny Cobain today to all of us. I want you all to know, my good people, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith, and from now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but on all who have longed for his coming. Lord, let the effect of your blessing today remain upon all of us. May we see ourselves as a blessed people. With your faithful people, give them new life and strength of spirit, so that the power of your love will enable them 
to accomplish what is right and good through Christ our Lord. Uh, thank you. My name is Kevin Kelly. I'm the president of Cleveland City Council, and as my colleagues will tell you, um, I never go over my time limit. I, uh, I try to land my punches like Johnny Kilbane, my points like Johnny did. But um, as uh, Councilman Zone alluded to earlier, uh, we're very fortunate that, that, this, that this creation, this sculpture, was not created by just anybody. It, is, it was created by Roman Gillespie, who is the most renowned artist um, in this type of art. I mean, he really is a fantastic um, artist, and we're very lucky to have him. And when Councilman Zone talked about all of the considerations that went into this in terms of the different, the different constituencies that were weighing in on what their expectations were, it couldn't have been easy. And I, I have a lot of respect for him for probably putting up with all the feedback that he had to take along the way. But um, with that, I would like to, uh, in addition to thanking uh, Councilman Zone, uh, former Council President Sweeney, because these projects are not easy to make work and it really takes a lot of diligence and hard work and I want to commend everybody who is involved in this but my purpose right now is to recognize Roman Gillespie uh, Cleveland City Council is especially pleased to extend warm and gracious welcome to the renowned artist sculptor Roman Gillespie on the occasion of the statue Johnny Kilbane Fighting Heart this council applauds Mr. Gillespie and his outstanding professional achievements as a leader and entrepreneur of the Irish immigrant experience and extends warm wishes to him for his continued success Rowan thank you Um, you know, it's not a traditional thing for an artist to talk on the day their sculpture is about to be, or their artwork is about to be unveiled, in particular before the drapers come off it, because this sculpture has been alone with me in my workshop in Black Rock. I do all the work myself, it's all done on my own, and I've lived alone with Johnny Kilbane for five months. He, a few people got to see him as he arrived here, but now this is his first viewing. I have no idea if you're all going to laugh me out of the place once you see it. <laughs> and so I think I shouldn't say anything except thank all of you incredible people who I've worked with. I mean, this has been, this has been the most amazingly positive project to work on. It's had so many dimensions to it, and I have to pick out Margaret Lynch in particular. Otherwise, names are all engraved on a plaque there, yeah. which you will see. But uh, now it's time for me to stop talking and the sculpture to do the talking. Thank you. Oops. That's yours. Without further ado, I, I want to do two things. First, I want to thank Councilman Marty Kane for not trying to join the group. Only goes to show you some members of council have discretion. <laughs> And it's appropriate this time to thank all those who also gave us proclamations and haven't asked for speaking time. And I single out first State Senator Tom Patton, who made sure the Ohio Senate recognized the situation. Senator Patton. <laughs> Needless to say, we received congratulations and proclamations from United States Senator Sherrod Brown, Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, Congresswoman Marcia Fudge, Congressman David Joyce, Congressman James Renacy, Cuyahoga County Executive Ed Fitzgerald, Mayor Frank Jackson, and quite frankly, a thousand fathers and mothers, as we've already said. Without further ado, I'd like to give you Margaret Lynch, the director of the Irish American Archive Society. If you'll bear with me, I told everyone that I wanted to have my say today as well. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, I was on the docks at the Port of Cleveland. I stood before a massive ocean-going container vessel that had carried the Johnny Kilbane sculpture to Cleveland. I told my companions, this all started as a plaque. 
The journey from a plaque to an artwork of world-class significance was an amazing one. It's a journey that took a family, a neighborhood, a community, a special artist of extraordinary sensitivity, and now all of you. First, the family. Johnny Kilbane's daughter, Mary O'Toole, lovingly tended the photographs, mementos, and stories of her father's career as boxing's longest reigning world champion. Today, 22 of the direct descendants of Johnny and Mary O'Toole are with us today. Let's uh, recognize them with a round of applause. I'll let Johnny's great-grandson, Kevin O'Toole, stand in for those 22. It took Kevin combing through those old photographs, as well as public records, to create a website in his great-grandfather's honor and to embark on the quest to restore that rare nitrate film that his grandmother had so innocently saved. Then it took the Irish-American community. Let's start with everyone who grew up thinking they were related to Johnny Kilbane. <laughs> Shirt-tail cousins, distant relations, or no relations at all, no matter what your grandmother told you. Uh, and it took the fact that that web of cousinship extends, let's face it, to all of the many Clevelanders whose families originated on Ackle Island or first settled in the Angle near St. Malachy's as Johnny Kilbane's family and so many of our families did. It took Johnny staying in Cleveland rather than taking his talents to New York. It took him living in the same kinds of houses and neighborhoods that all of his Ackle and Angle neighbors did and lending a helping hand when needed so that the grandmothers, uncles, family friends passed on the name of Johnny Kilbane as one of their own. So that when fireman Michael Sporty Kilbane, one of those perhaps distant relations, began a few years ago to talk up the 100th anniversary of Johnny Kilbane's title, first title fight in 2012. He got the ear of Jerry Quinn and Colin Corgan Day of the Mayo Society and of many others. When another one of those distant Kilbane relations, Galway-based filmmaker Des Kilbane, brought a documentary film about Johnny to the Cleveland International Film Festival in 2013, the screening sold out many times over. The Irish-American community had already supported the famine memorial in the flats, the renovation of the cultural gardens, and we were gratified and hopeful to think that they might support our project as well. This journey took an organization devoted to the history of the Irish in Cleveland, the Irish-American Archives Society. It's an organization that had acquired the capacity and community standing to lead the effort that, story, that Sporty had begun so that when the Archives Society pitched collaboration on a display about Johnny Kilbane, the Cleveland Public Library and its chair, Tom Corgan, were willing to say yes. Tom believed so strongly in the endeavor that he subsequently joined our board and now serves as our president. But we also needed another community, a neighborhood poised at the crossroads between old and new. Johnny Kilbane happened to have lived on West 74th and Herman, a few blocks south of here at the time of his first title fight. This is a neighborhood that had strong Irish presence since the 1870s and launched the first home of the West Side Irish American Club in the early 1930s. But it's also a neighborhood that has had many caring stewards, a proud succession of working class people, not just Irish, but Romanian, Italian, Appalachian, and Hispanic. It's a neighborhood that has benefited from an incredible line of committed leaders who grew up here and loved their place from Michael and Mary Zone to their son, Matt, the current councilman, with Judge Ray Pianca right in there in the mix in between. And it's a neighborhood that once might have been counted out, but is now on the rise. And that's in part due to the Detroit Shoreway Community Development Organization, which was launched by Judge Pianca and is now helmed by Jeff Ramsey. This has become a neighborhood of artists, entrepreneurs, urban pioneers willing to take a chance such as a theater artist at Cleveland Public Theater, near West Theater, Eileen Salmon and Pete Lanahan at Stone Mad, and Sean Kilbane at the Happy Dog Saloon. We found ready and willing partners in this neighborhood. In fact, the neighborhood upped the ante. We're standing on the site of the former Ever Ready Battery Factory. The complex had been shuttered and abandoned since the 1970s. In 2005, the Maroos family, owners of Vintage Development Group, led an extraordinary partnership of public and private resources to reclaim the brownfield, and in an incredible act of faith, started construction on the townhouse development that takes shape around us today. The Maroos brothers had envisioned public art as part of their development plan, and I well remember the day that Matt Zone took us on a tour of the area and challenged the Irish American Archives Society to think bigger than a plaque. 
It also took intrepid homeowners who shared the developer's vision of an artful place and, as Matt described to you, were willing to spend hours of their own time to hash out the goals for what was now evolving into the Johnny Kilbane Sculpture Project. And if all that wasn't enough, it took an exceptional artist. Archive Society board member Tom Scanlon had challenged us to include an Irish artist in the mix of those we were considering. By some miracle, we found our way to Dublin-based sculptor Rowan Gillespie, and something about our plucky undertaking appealed to him. We're still not sure what. <laughs> After an interview process, we gave Rowan an impossible design brief as Matt discussed a very long list of everything we hoped that his work would express. We wanted one single sculpture to convey the story of a man's whole life, the story of a neighborhood, a community, of an entire city. We urged Rowan to take in the urban skyline and the distance over there, the ore sh ships out on the lake and the freight trains that provided Johnny with his first jobs and are still the engines of our city's industrial might. We reported to him that Cleveland had been the fifth largest American city during Johnny Kilbane's prime. And we insisted that though it has since plummeted to 45th in size, we still have the foundations and aspirations of a great American city. Johnny was able to reinvent himself several times in a life filled with losses as well as achievements, and we wanted Rowan to link that personal story of resilience with the story of a neighborhood and a city in the process of reinvention and transformation. Tell a story that's emblematic of the Irish American experience, we said, but also, while you're at it, tell a broader story that speaks to a city of immigrants from all over the world. And Rowan Gillespie has our everlasting gratitude for listening patiently, observing keenly, and reflecting deeply. He responded with three figures that trace the arc of an individual life, but also speak actually to everything else we had asked for. He worked with unfailing care and attention to detail, casting the bronze himself, creating the sculptures himself, driving them himself to Antwerp so that they could be shipped on a direct route to Cleveland, a service that our Port Authority had just launched this summer. It also took the tradesmen here, who matched Rowan's concentration as he worked among them a few weeks ago to install the sculpture. Laborers from Local 310, Bricklayers Local 5, Norris Brothers Company, MK Masonry, all gave unstintingly of time and equipment. One of the cement contractors told me that this project was one of the proudest experiences of her working life. Throughout this journey, I've been struck by how often people express personal motivations for their involvement. Whether it was Matt Zone recounting how his mother told him to leave the neighborhood a better place, or Chip Maroos describing his Czech immigrant forebears, or Jack Kale, who spoke about the gro growing up in the projects in the Angle, and the Irish grandmother, Mary Cusick Kale, who helped keep his family together when they fell on hard times. And by the way, our journey really needed Jack and Sherry Kale. Jack Kale was the first person who stepped up with a substantial gift and challenged others to step up as well. Jack. Ray Murphy, Judge Pianca, and so many others gave us confidence that we could actually see this project through. For me and my family, the inspiring person was my grandmother, Beatrice Gallagher Lynch. My grandmother grew up in the Angle. She was about 10 years younger than Johnny and was one of those kids who looked up to him and saw him as one of their own. My grandmother was a wonderful storyteller. Her, st her storytelling about the angle, about Johnny Kilbane, about our family, gave me a love of history. And I saw honoring Johnny Kilbane as a way to honor her. And also, my parents, Tom and Margaret Lynch. My parents, as many of you know, have also valued and protected our Irish heritage and passed the burden and the privilege on to me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I want to thank my parents and my extended family for their wholehearted support of this project. Apologies for the literary folk among you. I'm about to quote an American, not an Irish poet. I'm almost done. But the poet Walt Whitman once said, I am large, I contain multitudes. We are here today because the skillful hands and huge heart of Rowan Gillespie have brought to life an individual story that contains multitudes. Those multitudes now include all of us, all of our hopes and aspirations, sorrows and joys. And now we all need to become stewards of this eloquent work of art, a work of Brown's that is strong enough to stand thousands of years, but is nonetheless fragile and about to be exposed. 
I never knew how awesome a responsibility a sculpture was going to be until Rowan handed it over to us. We hope that you will come back here and listen to this sculpture's many voices, to the lonely yet defiant boy who will not be defeated by a mother's death or a father's blindness, to the young boxer with something to prove, ready to take on the world, to the older man who knows that in the measure of a long and full life, the sweet can outweigh the bitter. In a hundred years, none but perhaps the very youngest of us, maybe Ryan's little child, will still be alive. But it is our hope that those who come after us will sense the multitudes who have been involved in the placement of this sculpture here. We hope that they will care for it as we pledge to, just as so many have tended all this place around us before us. It is not only our hope, but our belief that the stewards of the future will recognize our faith in them by the preciousness of the gift that we give them today. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. We're almost to the point of climax. I just want to remind you that immediately after we unveil the sculpture, there's going to be cake under the tent, and shortly thereafter, Matt Zone will meet anybody who wants at the powerhouse door. If you'd like to find more, find out more about this neighborhood development, meet Judge Pianca on the Linear Park, which is right here, almost, oh, one o'clock from me here. If you'd like to walk up to Johnny Kilbane's house and hear some of the lore of Kilbane Town, or Kilbon Town, and uh, if you'd like to meet singer James Kilbane under the pavilion, if you'd like to hear some of the story about the Kilbanes of Ackle, since he's got it on both sides of his family, he knows them all. And groups may want to organize themselves for photos with the sculpture, and we can appreciate that, but I hope you'll give the O'Toole family Johnny's uh, grandson and uh, grandsons and their children the opportunity to be, take the first pictures around the, the sculpture. So with that, I'd like to introduce the great-grandson who helped make this start in terms of the initial challenge by going through his grandmother's attic. You know, at the Irish American Archives Society, we're partial to people who go through their grandmother's attic. So if you haven't done it in your grandmother's attic, I encourage you to do so. Without further ado, I give you Kevin O'Toole. Well, with all the speeches, I'm a little concerned the sculpture is going to reveal itself before we're ready. So since I'm neither a politician nor a lawyer, I'll be quick. Um, you know, I never dreamed several years ago when there was some first discussion about doing something to honor Johnny that all this would come to fruition. Um, I've had some really great experiences both here in Cleveland and in Ireland as well, and I'm both proud and honored to be uh, a part of all of those. Um, I'd like to uh, thank three people today specifically. Um, the first is Margaret Lynch. Um, without her dedication and perseverance, uh, certainly this project wouldn't have happened. So thank you, Margaret. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my cousin Aaron for her help and support uh, the last couple years to help make this happen. So thank you, Aaron. And of course, I'd like to thank uh, Rowan Gillespie for his beautiful work. Um, not only for selecting this project as something that he'd like to work on, but for caring enough to learn who Johnny was, not just as a boxer, but as a, a member of the community and a family man, and incorporating all of that into his work and taking the time and diligence to do that. And I think the sculpture reflects that, and I think all of his work reflects that, and I think we're very lucky to have him work on this project. So thank you, Ron. Uh, and again, that's, that's all I want to say. So thank you for coming. So at this time, I'd like to invite John O'Toole, is your dad here, and, and Tom O'Toole, uh, and Patrick O'Toole, sorry, to uh, join us, and I'm going to have the O'Toole family do the unveiling.
Does anybody know how to say one, two, three in Irish? <laughs> one, two, three. Your father O'Donnell is blessing the statue for us and thanking the family. Well, that concludes our program, and please enjoy the cake and stay for the festivities. I invite the rest of the O'Toole family up for pictures at this time. Thank you.